Good morning, and welcome to Bridgewater Church Online. Thanks for spending some screen time with us. You are joining us in the middle of our current series, Heart for the House. As we begin today, before we dig into the Word, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the things that you're teaching us about your heart for the church and the ways that we participate in that. God, we love you, and we're humbled to be able to come together in worship and in prayer and in the study of your Word. Thank you for your presence. Amen. Good morning, BWC family and friends. I am so excited to be able to share with you this morning. We have come to the final message in our series called Heart for the House. And it's been exciting. We've learned to pray together, praise together, and participate together. I really hope, I've been praying for you, that you decided to embrace the challenge and go and encourage other people with your actions. Actions of love in text and emails and notes and phone calls. And I have to thank those 
in my life who texted me, called me, and gave a shout out of thanks and gratitude. It really was inspirational. So, today we are in this last message in Heart for the House. It's time to discover that God's people must provide together. To develop this heart for revival we've been talking about, we have to choose to be generous. And I, I really think this. I think more than ever before, now, after everything we've been through, we must challenge one another to be as generous and as giving as possible because the world around us is struggling. E even friends and family in our church and, and people that we love, people are struggling. There are so many ways to be generous. There are so many ways to give. And I know this one's kind of off the table, but I got to tell you, I still believe it's one of the best ways to show generosity. Everyone needs a hug. Everybody needs a hug. I'm a little bit hug deprived. I really am. Now, I don't know if you know this, but there are five top reasons that everybody needs to give and to receive hugs. Number one, hugs are vital for human development. Everyone needs at least eight hugs per day for maintenance. Now get this, we need 12 hugs per day for growth. How's your hug limit? How are you doing with that during the pandemic? Hugs are huge, reduce stressors, or reduces stress, I'll get it right. A hugging embrace reduces the stress hormone cortisol, releasing tensions and sending calming messages to our brains. No wonder people are all up in arms these days. They, they're not getting their hugs and they're more stressed. How about this? Hugs elevate hope. People who hug three or more times per day have more energy, feel less depressed, concentrate more easily, and rest more peacefully. Number four, hugs make us more mindful. When people hug often, our muscles regenerate faster, our minds think more clearly, and we're happier. And then this one, hugs are heart healthy. Hugging 20 seconds, now I want you to think about it. Hugging 20 seconds or more releases oxytocin, the feel-good hormone. Our immune systems increase and our feelings of stress decrease making our hearts healthier. Okay, okay, listen, stop right now. Keep, keep, keep the TV on, keep Facebook on, get up and go hug somebody while I keep talking. Go hug somebody, but it's gotta be 20 seconds or more. I've been practicing at home with Kay. 20 seconds feels really good, I'm telling you. Okay, if we're gonna have a heart for the house, we've realized God's people must pray together like a garden, Praise together like a symphony, participate together like a human body, and today we're going to learn that God's people must provide together like a hug. That's exactly what we need to learn, and it's up to us to make three decisions that will empower us to provide together, to develop this heart for God's house and prepare for revival. We're back in Philippians at the end of chapter 4, and we're going to begin with verses 10 through 14. Paul writes, I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at least you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need. For I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Decision number one, if we're going to have a heart for God's house, 
God's provision is for sharing. We have to decide to share what God has given to us. Now, we have to realize that Paul, as we said last week, Paul loved, 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 can I say it again? Loved the Philippians. He loved them. He begins verse 10 thanking God that these Christ followers could at last renew their concern for him. Now, this is so cool. This, this phrase, at last, carries this picture with it. Here's what Paul literally said. You caused your thoughts for me to flower again like a tree blossoming in springtime. Do you know people like that? Do you have people in your life that when you see them and you're around them, they just make you feel like it's spring? And there's this joy that, that comes from connecting together. I hope you have people like that in your life because here's what Paul was saying. Paul said, look, I'm, I'm in a prison. I'm in chains. I'm struggling. Paul was malnourished. He was cold. He, he wasn't living a life of luxury at all. But Paul said, when I got your care package, when you did the, the door drop off, the porch drop off for me, immediately, immediately, I rejoiced. And he wasn't just happy. He rejoiced greatly. Now, please, please don't be offended by this. I love people who are grateful, but I really love people who show gratitude. Not just, hey, thanks. That was so nice. But when, when we're excited, when we're joyful, do you rejoice greatly you see if we're really going to understand how to have a heart for god's house god's provision is for sharing in a way that we rejoice together i got a text because of the challenge last week and the love of a friend bob reached out to me in a text and he he said pastor just wanted to thank you for everything you've done for me and my family. You are truly a great friend and a pastor. The next text box said this. Now go eat those M&Ms. By now everybody knows it's a go-to for me. And then he added, have you ever tried them from the freezer? Oh, it's like taking a trip to heaven. There was a pause and I said, I said, no, Bob, I haven't done that yet. He says, let me know what you think. I always have a bag of peanut M&Ms in the freezer. Well, not right now because I just finished my last bag last night. <laughs> oh man, I laughed like I'm laughing now. I rejoiced greatly because my friend Bob, he, he chose to share God's provision with me, his love, his gratitude, his friendship. Listen, church, whatever God has gifted you to give, give it. If it's laughter, express it. If it's a talent, use it. If it's a smile, show it. If it's money, donate it. Whatever God has placed in our hands, he gives it to us so we can give it away to others and share joyfully. Now, Paul, Paul gives a word of warning, though. Just in case the Philippians thought Paul was absorbed in their gifts, he wasn't. You see, today we're all bombarded with messages hundreds, thousands of times per day that tell us we need more stuff to be comfortable. Not Paul. Paul says, I've learned the secret of being content. 
Have you learned the secret of being content? Are you struggling these days during this pandemic thinking, I need, and then you fill in the blank? See, Paul, regardless of the season he was in, Paul said, when I've been in need, I'm still content. When I'm full and have plenty, I'm still content. Regardless of what Paul was going through, he shares the foundation of his faith. He says, I can do all things through him, through Christ, who gives me strength. Now, this is one of the most beautiful verses ever written, ever quoted, but too many times it's misunderstood. Paul wasn't saying, I can. The emphasis wasn't on, I can do it. The emphasis was on Christ. I can do all things through Him, in Christ. See, Paul, Paul realized that all of the things that God had given him were provisions of God's love and grace to be received and to share. God gives to us so that we can get in order to give. God gives so we can get to give. Hey, listen, if we're going to develop a heart for God's house, God's provision is for sharing. It's a decision. It's a choice. And that's why Paul said, yes, it was good of you to share in my troubles. Mike and I want to get his last name right, Brundrit, Mike Brundrit, had an in, just a horrible tragedy that hit him in 2017. In a car accident, he lost his wife and one of his boys. He struggled to move through that challenging time. And about a year after the accident, Mike realized he had to do something in order to move beyond his depression, his worry, his fear. Mike went back to something that his entire family had done for years. They were a part of an incredible church community. They had such a love for God and for one another. And they had made it a habit to hug each other. When people would come into their house, they hugged them when they left, they hugged them when they saw people, they hugged them. They were very intentional with their hugging. He decided there needed to be an international day of hugging. And so he posted his thoughts on his Facebook account. All of a sudden it started getting picked up. And the challenge was simple. Hug the people in your life. Share your love with them. Well, did you know now, coming up in July, we'll have another hug day. But I don't want you to wait till July. I want you to understand this. God's provision is for sharing. And whatever God has placed in your hands, don't think it's just about money. Whatever God has placed in your hands, whatever God has given you, whatever joy, whatever love, share it. And you may feel like you can't even really share right now in a pandemic. There's a very small nucleus of people that you care about, people that you're around, some very intimate family and friends. Are you hugging them? Are you sharing with them? Are you, I get a lot of air hugs when I'm at church. Listen, folks, more than ever, we have to choose to share what God has given to us. Now, that was Paul's first decision. But look at his next decision. It's found in verses 15 and 18. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out for Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid 
more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to your account. I've received full payment and have more than enough. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. If we're going to have a heart for God's house, here's decision number two. God's provision is for caring. Not just sharing, but God's provision is for caring. Now, Paul tells us a story. He doesn't start with once upon a time. He starts with the word moreover. Here's what Paul was trying to get across. He said, oh, don't forget the time at the beginning of our ministry together when no one shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you only. I like how it's written in the message. In the message, this is pretty, pretty pointed. It's blunt. You Philippians will know, and you can be sure, I'll never forget it, that when I first left Macedonia province, venturing out with the message, not one church helped out in the give and take of this work except you. You were the only one. Even while I was in Thessalonica, you helped out. And not only once, but twice. Not that I'm looking for handouts, but I do want you to experience the blessing that issues from generosity. Can you imagine that on Facebook? People would have ripped, Paul. You're insensitive. You, you don't care. How dare you compare? Listen, I, I need to say this. I need to get this on the table. We need to be bold in our faith. We need to call things out. We've got to do it in love, but we have to speak truth. And what Paul was saying was this. You not only shared, but by sharing you show that you cared. I love this statement from Randy Alcorn. I've been reading his, his uh, wisdom, his insights for years. He writes, God prospers me not to raise my standard of living, but to raise my standard of giving. Have you noticed something in a lot of preaching today in a lot of churches? Have you noticed a lot of talk even among followers of Jesus? Today, everybody wants people to say things to make us feel good. Can you, pastor, can you just say something to me today that makes me feel good? Listen, I want you to feel good. I want you to be hopeful. I want you to be inspired. But here's the truth. God has given us provisions to share. And when we share, we show we care. We've got to do it. God gives to us so that we'll get, so that we can give, to raise our standard of giving. When was the last time you gave in a way it made you uncomfortable? Now, okay, okay, I know. I know you're thinking money. All right, all right. Go ahead, think about money. When was the last time you really wrote the check or you gave online or you emptied your pockets and it made you uncomfortable, right? When was the last time you did it? But you know it's not just about money. When was the last time that you loved somebody, you called somebody, you, 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 somebody that maybe, maybe you struggled with? When was the last time you called out truth to somebody that you really, really loved? You shared and you cared because that person matters to you. I, I love the story Dennis Mannering tells. He was teaching a class of adults. And th this was in his church. And Dennis gave homework. I love giving homework. It's so awesome. And then the next week, he said, does anybody want to talk? Now, we'll, we'll understand in a minute what that homework was, but when he asked if anybody wanted to share, he thought maybe a woman would share. Ladies, we're not being prejudiced. It's just the homework was to go tell someone that you love them. 
someone you had never said it to before or someone you were on the outs with. To his surprise, a guy in his 30s got up, rose to his six foot two framework, and, and, and we're going to call him Jack. And Jack said, Dennis, can I share? The story was incredible. He said, I was mad that you gave that homework. I thought, how dare you give homework to challenge me to say I love you to someone that I, I'm struggling with. He, he, thought I'm, I, he thought I'm just not going to do it. Because he said to the whole class, Jack said, you see, five years ago, my father and I had a vicious disagreement and have never resolved it. Oh, yeah, we see each other at family gatherings, but we don't talk to each other. He said, the weird thing was, I knew the minute that you spoke, God was speaking to me. I went home and made the decision that I was going to call my dad. I told my wife, and all of a sudden, there was this heaviness that was raised from me. The next morning, I got up bright and early. I went to the office, and at 9 a.m., I called my dad to see if I could come over right after work. He said, I have something to tell you. His dad grumpily, is that a word? His dad just irritated, said, well, whatever. Now what? And Jack assured him it wouldn't take long. At 5.30, I was at my parents' house, he says, and I was ringing the doorbell, praying my dad would answer, because if my mom answered, I'd end up telling her and chickening out. Dad answered the door. I did not waste any time. I took one step in the door frame, and I said, Dad, I just came over to tell you that I love you. Instantly, a transformation came over my dad. Right before my eyes, his face became soft. His eyes filled up with tears. And then he did something unexpectedly. Jack said, my dad reached out and hugged me. And he didn't want to let go. And neither did I. And then he said, son, I love you too. I always have. I've just never been able to say it. God's provision is like a hug. It's to be shared because we care. Oh, I know. Maybe it sounds a little corny. We share, we care. I, I get it. But I don't want you to forget today's message. God's richly blessed us. And I love this, what Paul said. Paul said, I'm not looking for handouts. Paul, Paul was not at all focused on the gifts like, hey, you Philippians, you should have given to me. Hey, you Philippians, you should do the right thing. Listen, if we know Jesus Christ, we know to do the right things. It, it, can I get that amen out there? Come on, if we know Jesus, we know that he gives to us so we can share. And in the sharing, it's not motivated by what we're going to get back. Oh, listen, don't give gifts if it's about what you want back. Give the gift freely so that we demonstrate that we care. Paul said, listen, the gifts that you sent me, they were full payment. When Epaphroditus came in and gave the gifts, it was full payment. I'm thankful for that, Paul was saying. Thank you for sharing. But more than that, don't miss this. Thank you for caring. It, when, I, when I got the gifts, I wasn't thinking about the gifts. I was thinking about you. And it was like a fragrant offering from God in a prison cell that stunk and was damp and it was cold. You, you changed 
the entire atmosphere of the room and of my heart. Listen, that's why I love giving beautiful fragrances to my wife Kay. I give to her, but when she puts on that perfume, I get back so much more than I ever dreamed. Are we a fragrant offering for God? Are we willing to develop a heart for God's house and provide so extravagantly because God has given so graciously to each of us? God's provision is for sharing It is for caring. And here's the last decision. God's decision is for declaring. Philippians 4, 19 through 20. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. The Philippians were so willing to share and care And Paul says, declare God the author and provider of all things. Declare praise to God. Give him glory. That's why I love Philippians 4.19. He says, don't forget Philippians. God will meet all your needs according to his riches in glory. In Christ Jesus We must not only declare our faith with our words, we must be willing to declare our faith with generous provision. The Philippians had nothing to be ashamed of. There there was no guilt. None of us should be guilty. Right now we should be giving God all the praise. We should be giving God time. We should be watching God's word. We should be absorbing and praying through and reading God's word. We, we should be doing everything that we can to be able to receive from God. And this is why Paul calls it out. He uses a banking term. This is what Paul says. He says, I'm not really interested in what gifts you gave. He said, what I'm interested in is that you get the credit in heaven from God. He literally uses a banking term and he says, what you give is a crude to you like interest. Did you know that God's banking is very different than the rest of our banking? God has a glorious bank account. And we can never outgive God. So every time we give, it doesn't go unnoticed. In fact, Do you know what Paul is saying? This is huge. The more that we share, the more that we care, the more that we declare God's blessing, Jesus Christ, according to his riches and glory, he intercedes for us. Look at Romans 8. This is powerful. Paul wrote, Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But look at what he says. No. No. In all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Listen, church. When we declare the praises and the glory of God, Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Jesus intercedes on our behalf. Anybody out there need intercession? 
Does anybody out there need God's help? Does anybody out there want to quit trying to live life on your own? Do you need a Savior who can save you from your sins, heal you, empower you, and love you unconditionally? Does anybody out there need God's grace and His love? If you do, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, He rose again, He is at the right hand of God the Father, and He intercedes for us when we declare God's glory. If we're really going to be people that God can bless, God's provision is for declaring. So I have a challenge. This is my fourth and final challenge in this, in this series. It's a BWC day of provision. Number one, pray and ask God, who needs you to share with them? Go ask. God, who needs it? Who needs me to share? And by the way, don't cut God off. It may be somebody you don't want to share with. This isn't kindergarten. Pray and ask God who needs you to share with them. Call someone and let them know you care about them. And before you hang up, and notice I didn't say a text or an email. Before you hang up, ask them how you can pray for them. I had that happen to me yesterday. Out of the blue, a wonderful friend called me to check on me and Kay and our family. And we were talking together and he said, before we hang up, can I pray for you? I tell you in that moment, I needed it more than he knew. I was struggling yesterday with some thoughts and, 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 and just worries. And this friend called and God Lighten my load. And then last, give someone a real or creative hug and declare God's glory. Now, I want to actually, can I, can I challenge you? Can I challenge you with this? So first, every single person that you are around on a regular basis, even if you're not a hugger, maybe I should say especially if you're not a hugger, go do it. Go on. Just get your arms out and hug. And remember, 8 to 12. eight's maintenance, 12 is growth and beyond. And then don't forget this, 20 seconds. You got to have that 20 second hug. Hug your kids. Hug your spouse. Hug your family. Whoever you're sheltered in place with. And Thanksgiving is coming. The day, you know. I hope you're not going to be with people you shouldn't be with. Does that make sense? Uh, but all the people you eat with, what would it be like if we just gave them a hug? Right? Now, of course, it needs to be safe and you got to make sure everybody's good. But if you can't hug them physically, how about this? Go buy, have you, do you like chocolate? Go buy the Hershey's Hugs. Have you seen the Hershey's hugs? They're like their kisses. And go buy some hugs and, and let people, just pe put them on their chairs at Thanksgiving. A no-touch zone. Pass out hugs to people. What, 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 about, what about air hugs? What about just saying to somebody, I'm hugging you right now. Let's stand here for 20 seconds until it's over. You see, God's, God's provision, it's for sharing, it's for caring, and it's for declaring. Now, finally today, all in, all give. I'm challenging everybody to not only give hugs and to be generous with your words of love, and your words of, of genuine care. But I'm also challenging all of our BWC family to give above your tithes and offerings. Yeah, it's been a tough year financially, but we're doing okay. But we need your help to continue promoting the message of the gospel. Continue reaching out to the world. More than ever before, we've been able to share care and declare 
online. We're meeting new people. And we need you to give. All in, all give. In fact, I have a special challenge. We really need to upgrade all of our equipment because our online ministry, you, you folks out there, you are so important to us. We've realized that we need to upgrade. And God's really laid it on my heart today to ask you to give generously because we need we need at least $200,000 for that upgrade. But we also just need to continue to give in this house. Now I want to say something about that. Whatever you give, it's fine. Just give in proportion to how God has blessed you. Give and let God be glorified. And no matter what it is that we give today, whether you give online right now an extra gift or whether you're sending it in the mail or you're dropping it off at church. Whatever you give, give all the glory and the honor to God because he is our provider. God's people must provide together. Let's put our hands out. Father, thank you. Thank you for this incredible opportunity that we have to trust you. Thank you for this incredible opportunity that we have to put all of our faith in you. Thank you that you are doing something we can't even imagine or dream right now. You've called us to share. You've called us to care. And now we declare glory and honor to you. Father, help us to be so generous this week with our words and our actions that you would be pleased Let our heavenly bank account fill up, but not for us, so that we can get only to give again. We love you. Give us a heart for the house, your house, God, we pray. Amen. I love you so much. What a great series. This has been exciting. Stay with us for some announcements and worship. Don't forget to give online. Don't forget to be all in with us. You're not forgotten. You matter so much. And until I see you, take heart and be transformed. Let the King of my heart
Good morning, Bridgewater family. My name is Liz, and we are so glad that you've decided to join us for a part of your weekend. We've got some announcements to share with you today, so here is this week's Bridgewater Buzz. Our annual business meeting is tonight, right here on campus at 5 p.m., and all of our COVID precautions will be in place. Your input matters. If you are 16 or older, have a relationship with Jesus, and have been a part of our BWC family for at least six months, please participate with us tonight as we make important decisions in the life of our church. We'll see you then. The season of giving is right around the corner. And Bridgewater wants to be both a blessing to others as well as give you the chance to help us bless families this Christmas season. From now until December 6th, we're hosting our Giving Tree Outreach to help bless families in need this year at Christmas. Please stop by the Giving Tree display in the lobby or contact the church office to learn more about how you can help. Let's come together during this season and be a blessing to others. Today is All In, All Give Sunday, and we're glad that you're here to celebrate with us. Your generosity and financial commitment through 2020 has been a blessing to our pastors, our staff, and any members who've been in need this year. If you're joining us online today, it's not too late to participate. Please pray about a financial gift that you can share above and beyond your normal giving so that we can continue to be good stewards of all that God has given us. Online giving is available at bwch.org give. This fall is shaping up to be an exciting season for all of us, and we hope that you can take full advantage of all of the things that we have going on here at Bridgewater. And don't forget, like us and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube for weekly updates. Sharing our posts also helps us to reach the community around us. That's all that we have for you today. Have a blessed day, Bridgewater. <laughs>